Hi. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the elevation profile and vertical field of view functionality that is built into Photo Transit. To do that, I'm, I'm going to illustrate these ideas and uh, functions using a, a shot I've set up a little bit earlier. Just so you get the, the sense of where you are, we're here in uh, the plains of northeast Colorado, uh, becoming eastern Colorado, and here you can see from the topographic map, here are the, the foothills and then the peaks of the Rocky Mountains, or part of the Rockies. And in particular, the subject pin is dropped on a peak called Long's Peak, which is the northernmost 14,000 foot mountain uh, within the state. It's very prominent, you can see it from a long way away, particularly to the, to the east. So we're going to use that just to illustrate some of the ideas. We can use the Google Street View function from this position on Nelson Road to show what is visible. And you can see there's a view here slightly to the northwest uh, looking at the foothills. And then just here in the haze you can see there's the peak of, that's Long's Peak just there, that's Mount Mika just there. But very clearly prominent above the foothills. So that's what we're looking at. If I come back to the map, we're going to have a look here at the elevation bar. The elevation bar, when it's closed, shows you the height above sea level of the camera, the height above sea level of the subject, just under 14,000, the distance, 25.6 miles, the bearing, 286 degrees, and the altitude measured as an angle, so that's a, an angle up from camera to subject of plus 3.65 degrees. If we expand that, we come into a chart view. Now, you've got a couple of different data series you can show. I'm going to toggle elevation on first and vertical field of view off. Let me talk about the elevation one first because conceptually that's a little bit simpler to understand. That is simply a plot from camera to subject of the elevation above sea level and you'll see the scale here is in feet. I have this set to feet currently but you can change it to meters within the settings. Um, and it runs from 5,000 at the camera position to 14,000 feet at the subject, as we saw before. You can also see that the the line here is uh, solid in parts and dotted in other parts, and that shows you the visibility of the terrain. So anything that's in solid is visible from your shooting location. Anything that's dotted <coughs> is not visible from the shooting location because it's masked by the foothills that are in front of it between you uh, between the camera and, and that area of the land. So what's happening is that this chart runs from the camera along the line here to the subject. And it's measuring the elevation above sea level all the way and it's doing the calculation of what's the angle from the camera to that point in land and then drawing that on the graph and marking the areas that are visible and the areas that are masked. The way it does that is actually the data that's shown here on the vertical field of view chart. So that is measured in degrees and it goes from 0 degrees to plus 4 degrees uh, right the way up here at, at the peak and that's actually how we determine visibility. We do a calculation based on from camera to this point what's the difference in elevation, what's the distance, do some clever trigonometry and work out the angle and then by comparing the angles along the line you can work out the visibility. So this is uh, a different sort of view, you can see if I put both lines on that the two are related but the vertical field of view is a, a bit more exaggerated and that's simply because objects that are closer to you will appear larger. The, anything that's distant will recede as, as we're familiar with from looking at objects way away on, on the horizon. So that's what this vertical field of view chart gives you. It gives you one other thing as well. If you double click it will zoom out, in this case, to show you the range of the vertical field of view of the camera, or the camera lens and the focal length. So these blue masked areas here show the limits of what's visible through the viewfinder in the vertical plane. And you'll see that when I zoom the lens in, the field of view narrows. When I zoom out, it expands. So not only do we have the horizontal field of view shown on the map here, but also the vertical. Now, let's I'm going to toggle back to elevation. I'm going to close this. Let's now look at another shot where you imagine we drive a little further along this road um, and position the camera roughly here. So let me switch to another shot that, that captures that. So I'm on front range, Long's Peak from north 49th, and I'll not save any changes to that other shot. So there, you can see that the camera's moved here to north 49th. The subject remains on Long's Peak. If I open up the elevation bar again, 
Now you can see that all of this terrain here is in a dotted line, which indicates that from that camera position you can't really see anything um, that is that is dotted. You can see the the first of the foothills here, but not much beyond. If I just close that for a second, let's switch on Google Street View, and sure enough, you can see here there is no evidence of Long's Peak being visible from this point, and that's simply because we've moved much closer to the foothills, so it's masked. If I switch back to the vertical field of view, you can see that again there, that's what's visible. All of this is receding off into the distance, and the the angle, you can see it's, uh, let me zoom in there, this is now at, you know, plus, what, what's that, plus 4.7 degrees, pretty much the same as the angle up to the top of Long's, so it's not surprising that it's masked in, in this case. If I zoom back out, then you can see there's the field of view again, and we can get fairly close in on that. One thing, just to remind you, if you didn't see the Street View tutorial, you can switch Street View on and control that with a simulation of the field of view there as well. One other point on the elevation bar here, there are a few other additional controls that, that you can have a look at. One is camera pitch, height above the camera above the ground, height of the subject above the ground, which is intended, as you can see from the icon, really for buildings. And then also there is another button here which lets you choose different elevation data sources. So we have Google Elevation API, the Shuttle Radar Topography Mission, another data set called ASTA Global Digital Elevation Model and all of these are just different data sets for the, um, the the data that's used to calculate these profiles. If I switch the elevation on, maybe switch to SRTM3, you'll see that that changed subtly. And I'll change to ASTA, another subtle change, back to Google, you get the idea. Um, so I will do another tutorial that talks a little bit more about some of the differences in, in these data sets that you can choose from, and also how to use these controls on the left. We'll do that another time. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and hope you enjoy using Phototransit.